Aloha everybody, my name is Jody Kamio and I am a yoga teacher here at Power Yoga Hawaii located on the island of Oahu in Honolulu. Um, I'd like to first say thank you very much to Ulukai and Anywhere Aloha Friday for having me on. And today I'd like to show you how to do a supported headstand. I got into yoga a few years back when I had a car accident and lo and behold my doctor told me to self-medicate, heal a little bit faster, stand on my head, which made me scratch my head and go, why would a doctor suggest that? I researched that and it's just about blood flow. Think of your blood flow as a highway system or two-way street. Blood needs to go where it goes, and whatever it doesn't need, it kind of takes it out and eliminates from the body. So when we go upside down, it's like an hourglass. All we're doing is flipping ourselves down, and then when we flip the hourglass back, it just resets your whole entire nervous system, your blood flow, and other little subtleties of the body. The reason being we do that is, as human beings, we're either like this, like this, or like this pretty much our whole lives. You don't very rarely get like this unless you're picking something up, you drop something, or you're looking for something at very low places. Hence, you stand back up sometimes, you might get a little rush of blood to your head, and you feel a little bit dizzy. When we get upside down this morning, you bring your hands down. This is called the tabletop position where our hips are over our knees and our shoulders are over our elbows and our wrists. Shift your weight back a little bit. Bring your forearms down to the mat, please. The forearms should look like a number 11. Try not to let the elbows go out too far. It brings compression from the shoulder pushing up to the sides of the neck, and it's hard to elongate your body to find that length. If you're wondering how you get the elbows in, fold one palm over the opposite elbow like this, and the opposite elbows, and release the forearms, and we make that number 11. Once you establish where your forearms and elbows are, lift up your hands, interlace the fingers. Release the palms so your fingers are threaded nice and tight. Somewhere between the bridge of your nose and the top of your head, place your head between your palms. Everybody is different. Some people like it a little bit more forward, mid, or above their head. Please find what works for you. There's really no right or wrong way. The main thing is there's a connection somewhere from the palm towards maybe somewhere in the front or top of the head and face. Once you establish the connection, shift your weight a little bit more back towards your forearms and elbows. Tuck your toes into the mat, lift up your hips, and this might be more than enough because now you are inverted. Inversion means that is your heart comes over your head. Once you're here, slowly walk your feet as far forward or to your elbows as you're comfortable. Lift your heels up, maybe lift the okole, the roots up, drop the knees back down, lower the heels back down. You're welcome to do this several times just to get elevation in the hips, where the hips will slowly start to go in line with the shoulders. If you're more comfortable, you can tuck one thigh, one knee towards your rib cage, your chest, and you can also do the calf legs on one leg as well. If you'd like to go a little bit further, maybe find a little bounce in your feet. The elevation does not need to be high, as long as you feel a little bit of lift into your hips. Eventually, the hips will come up higher. You can also do this one leg in as well. Once the hips come up higher, the hips will float above the shoulders, stack the hips over the shoulders. Start to squeeze the glutes and the inner thighs. If you don't, the legs will sway. If the legs sway, more chances you'll fall toward the side and legs are swaying. Once you squeeze your glutes and your inner thighs, if you like to go a little bit further, extend your legs up to the ceiling and it's personal preference to kick the heels or flex your toes up to the ceiling and try to hold. The breath count is not as important as trying to find elevation because once you start to bring yourself up, you can hold for as long as you feel comfortable, remembering to shift your weight back to your forearms, elbows, relaxing your neck, squeezing the glutes, the thighs, the ankles, and adjusting the feet to where you're comfortable. When you are ready to exit the posture, bend the knees, bring the thighs back down, point the toes down, gently come back down, press your palms down, and slowly come back up. My only suggestion would be, if you have any discomfort in the neck, please don't get as elevated, bring your feet right back up. Thank you for joining me today, and once again, much mahalo to Ulukai. Wish you all a wonderful new year. Be blessed, be grateful. Until we meet again, much mahalo, aloha, and namaste.